first of all, I'd like to thank deeply the organizers of this gift workshop this year. First of all, to choose this topic about the Mediterranean area, which is a very uh, dear topic to me and to many others, and also for inviting me, of course, a good opportunity to share what we, we know, what we do uh, with, uh, with teachers, uh, which is a very important uh, uh, matter to me. And um, so, what I would like to do is to introduce the, somehow the geological evolution of the Mediterranean Sea region, not sea itself, but the Mediterranean region. And after my talk, there will be the talk of Claudio Facenna, who, who will see the same area from below, from, from, from the deep mantle. And he will be looking for the, the forces that drive and have been driven since the Cretaceous uh, and are still driving today the uh, tectonic evolution of the Medi Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so our talks are complementary. I hope there is not too much of an overlap between the two, but I think it will be, it will be all right. Okay, so the Mediterranean Sea is a fantastic area. It's a fantastic natural laboratory. Uh, and and for, for us geologists, geophysicists, geodynamicists, because it is uh, in, in a rather small domain, it's much smaller than the Pacific, of course, but in, in a rather, rather small domain, we have all the ingredients of plate tectonics, continental deformation, and we, we have a density of information that has been acquired since more than 150 years. First, the geologists working in the Alps, and nowadays, the geophysicists uh, working all over, all over the, wor the world, and especially in the Mediterranean area. We have a density of information, geological information, uh, geophysical information, including seismology, uh, as uh, Claudia will, will, will see, show you later uh, this morning. Uh, we have a density of information that is equal to, uh, to no one, nowhere. There, there is no, no other area in the world where the density of information is so great. Maybe California, but I'm not even sure. So we, we have a fantastic playground here for us geologists. Okay. So let's start with the uh, geodynamic and geological context of, of, the, of this uh, uh, rather small region, but for now it will be our... Uh, largest playground. So I will use this map here, which is the geodynamic map of the Mediterranean that was published several years ago and which is quite, quite useful. So all the red lines you see here are the, the faults, active or uh, recently active ones. Okay. So let's uh, first uh, look at the main ones. So you, you see here the, the thrust front of the, uh, uh, of the Alps and the Carpathian here. We are standing somewhere around here now. Uh, the thrust front of the Pyrenees here, of the uh, Betic Cordillera, the Rif, and all the Maghrebian chains here, the Atlas. You have, of course, here the, uh, the front of the, of the Zagros, the Caucasus here. We have the, the main subduction zones here. We'll come back to this later, of course. And we also have the, 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 the Apennines here. We also have this big fault which is very important in the, dynamic of the dynamics of the area, which is the North Anatolian Fault. Okay. Now, we, I've had it here in this deep blue color, areas where we have oceanic crust. Okay. And, but oceanic crust, uh, which is rather old, okay, which is a Mesozoic oceanic crust. So you find, of, co of course, the Mesozoic oceanic crust in the Atlantic here, mostly Cretaceous around here. But we also have old oceanic crust in the eastern Mediterranean here, <laughs> where the African plate is subducting below, uh, roughly speaking, Greece and, and Turkey. Okay? The age of this oceanic crust here is not precisely known. Okay? And the ages, they vary from the Carboniferous. A recent paper proposed that it is Carboniferous, which I don't believe, but it was published recently. And uh, it can be as young as the late Cretaceous. Okay. I favor a late Jurassic age, uh, uh, but this is ra rather unknown. 
Okay? And then we have all oceanic crust, Mesozoic oceanic crust, probably uh, Cretaceous, in the Black Sea here and in, in the southern part of the Caspian Sea. Okay? Then we have younger oceanic crust. We have young oceanic crust here in these uh, basin that, basins that will be uh, uh, mentioned later on as Bacoc basins. Uh, this big one here, which is called the Ligero Provencal Basin here and the Algero Provencal Basin in the south here. And in, within the Tyrrhenian Sea here, we have two domains where we have oceanic or quasi oceanic crust here in the southern part of the oceanic crust. These two, three basins here are young. They are at most uh, early Miocene in age, around uh, 23, 24 MA for the oldest oceanic crust around here. And this one is very young younger than two million years. Then we have all around these domains, we have uh, young mountain belts formed since, uh, say, 30, 35 million years. So we have, uh, of course, the Alps here. We have the Apennines. We have the Gibraltar Arc here with the Betics and the Rift, the uh, part of the, uh, the Atlas here. Of course, the Dagros, the Dinarids here. You see that the Carpathians uh, have not been so much active during the, the Neogene here. And uh, we also have here the, the subduction zones with the big accretionary wedges, which are now below the sea level, the Mediterranean ridge here, and, and the Calabrian accretionary prism here. What you see on this picture is quite peculiar. You see that these oceanic basins here, they open while these mountain belts were active. Okay, so you, you open, you had extensional tectonics here, uh, rifting a part of Corsica and Sardinia away from, from southern France and Spain here, and also opening of the, the, the Tyrrhenian Sea on this side, while all around you were building mountain, belt, mountain belts with compressional tectonics. Okay, and we have to explain this. Okay. At the same time, uh, we had... Uh, extension that didn't lead to um, oceanic crust formation here. Uh, but nevertheless, we have a uh, rather intense uh, finite extension here in the Aegean domain or in the Panionian Basin or, of course, all around here in the Tyrrhene Sea or, or the Alboran Sea here. Okay. So let's have a look to the main episodes of uh, uh, deformation and the main geodynamic episode we, we have uh, in this area. So uh, I recall you this uh, Jurassic, probably Jurassic Ocean here, which is a remain of a branch of the Tethys Ocean, which we sometimes call the Mesogean Ocean here. And this Mesogean Ocean was closed approximately at the same time as the large Tethys Ocean which is just seen today as remains known as ophiolites. You, you know about ophiolites? O okay. Remains of oceanic crusts uh, now sitting on top of continental crust. And these ophiolites, you find them from the very famous Oman ophiolite map here to scattered ophiolites in, in, in Iran here to Turkey here and, and also Greece and the Dinarids and of course uh, part of, of uh, the internal Alps here, okay? And these, this oceanic suture is between Eurasia here and a continental block that was detached from Africa somewhere in the Mesozoic. And this block, which is here, is called either Adria or Apulia, okay? And it collided with Eurasia uh, sometime, started to collide with Eurasia sometime in the late Cretaceous. Then we have something which is very important, which, is, which happened exactly at the same time as these basins here were extending, is the, of course the opening of the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and the rotation of Arabia, the separation of Arabia from Africa. Okay? This should, be not, should not be neglected, as Claudio will show you. This has something to do with the extension in the area here. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> And then we have, of course, the Bacoc basins, uh, which I, I will be talking about. And then we also have magmatism here. And magmatism, if I 
I could have added also magmatism on this side, but uh, I wanted to emphasize that while you had uh, 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 intense magmatism here, you also had intense magmatism here, and this magmatism has migrated from south to north from the late Eocene all the way to the uh, Miocene here uh, during the rotation of, of Arabia. Okay. These are the main ingredients. Now have a look to, let's have a look to the, uh, the, the dynamic evolution, so some kinematic reconstruction. We are 170 million years ago here, and uh, you see Africa here, India, uh, you see Eurasia, of course, and this is the Apulia, famous Adria uh, block here, which is being separated from uh, Africa through this, uh, uh, this uh, mid-ocean ridge here, and this is the alpine ridge that will uh, give the, make the alpine ophiolites here. And this is the main subduction zone here with, with volcanism on top of it here. Okay. So Africa is moving north, and in the uh, early Cretaceous, uh, sorry, this is still in French, but um, <laughs> the uh, Africa is moving north, and while it is moving north, it is extending. And you have lots of rifts here, shown in green, here in that part of the uh, geological evolution. It's extending also ab above the subduction zones here uh, in the Caspian Sea and, and the Black Sea. Okay. Late Cretaceous, now it's in English, uh, we have the, this very important event of uh, the ophiolite abduction that starts about, at, about this time here. Uh, so the whole uh, northern part of Africa and Apulia is under compression here, and oceanic crust is being abducted on top of the, uh, of the continental crust. Late Cretaceous still, that's the end of the abduction period here, the, the NAPs, Ophiolite naps are emplaced here, but the ocean is not still closed, not yet closed. Okay. And the whole domain is under compression here. Eocene, 45 million years ago, uh, we, have, we are in, under collision here. We'll, we'll just uh, very soon reach the collision here, but it's not yet closed here. 30 million years ago, here we are in collision here, and we have the beginning of extension here in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden. We have, of course, the uh, big uh, volcanic uh, uh, provinces here of the AFAR here. And you see that now the Mediterranean is a closed domain, landlocked domain. Okay. Miocene, 10 million years ago, it starts to look as uh, it is now. We have opened the Ligoro provincial basin here, not yet the Tyrrhenian Sea here. And of course, the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden are actively opening. And this is the present, okay? Let's have a closer look to, to, to uh, the Mediterranean domain now. So we have Africa here, Arabia, Eurasia, and all this complex uh, uh, domain in between here, okay? So let's have a look to a few features. Crustal thickness first. Crustal thickness, you see that in most, so you see the more depths here between 10 and 60 uh, kilometers. You see that most of the, ocean, of the Mediterranean domain is underlying and underlain by, by rather thin oceanic uh, com crust, sorry. But this is mainly due to the presence of oceanic crust, which, which as you know, is never thicker than 10 kilometers or something, okay? Then you have rather thick crust below the mountain belts, of course, here. Uh, and thin crust also in continental domain, like the Aegean Sea or the Pannonian Basin here. If now have, we have a look now to the lithospheric thickness. The lithosphere is rather thin in the Mediterranean area everywhere. So uh, except here, because uh, here you, have the, uh, you see the subduction of the Hellenic sla slab here. But you see that it is very thin here uh, under the eastern part of Turkey. It's thin here under the western part of the Mediterranean here. And then... If we have a look to the, uh, well, this is another model which, which is more extreme in terms of uh, uh, the, th the thin character of the lithosphere there. If we have a look to the lithosphere, lithospheric resistance now, okay, what you see is, in general, the lithosphere is weak in the uh, Mediterranean area. Of course, it's stronger here where we have the uh, Hellenic slab, but in general, it's in the weak part of uh, the uh, 
uh, gradients of, uh, of res uh, lithospheric resistance in, in general, okay? Only red, white, and, and yellow colors in that area. So it's an easily deforming uh, domain. The kinematics now, well, you see the convergence between Africa here and Eurasia. This is, uh, Eurasia is fixed in this picture. You see the uh, fast motion of Arabia, and you see the still faster motion of Anatolia here, and you see this rotation. We'll come back to, to this a little bit later. Okay. The main ingredients of geodynamic ingredient, of course, in that area is subduction. And if we have a look to this section here from Africa to, uh, uh, to the Balkans here through the Aegean Sea and Crete and so on, you, you see a simplified uh, a picture of the African slab here, crossing the upper lower mantle transition here. And above it, we have the uh, Aegean domain we'll be talking a lot uh, about later on. Okay. So subduction of the African lithosphere in the mantle. We have frontal compression and shortening here. That, that's the Mediterranean ridge, the accretionary prism. And in the back arc domain, depending upon time, we have now, nowadays, we have mostly extension, but before 35 MA, in that area, we had compression. And we, uh, there was a mountain belt being formed here before 35 MA, which is known as the Hellenides. Okay. And after 35 MA, it, was, it started to collapse because the dynamics of subduction changed. So what, what about farm, finite deformation? The, in, the, in that area, we have... Uh, mountain belts being formed, and we have extensional basin, as, as I said already, okay, at the same time, and this is very important. We also have high pressure, low temperature metamorphism, blue schist and eclogai, okay, and they are all over the place, from the Alps to the Betic Cordillera or to, to Turkey here, and these, these sign past subductions, so we can use them to reconstruct the uh, evolution of subduction zone, zones through times. Okay. So they were formed in the depth of subduction zones here, and now they are now at the surface. Okay. And we can study them, study their uh, deformation, kin past kinematics, pressure, temperature evolution, and they are very precious to uh, uh, specialists of tectonics in, in that area. Okay. They are uh, very characteristic because in a PT diagram here, these rocks, they were equilibrated along this sort of gradient, which you can compare to this sort of gradient, which is a sort of an equilibrated gradient, that, like the one we may have below our feet. And this one is high pressure, low temperature. It's colder, typical of uh, what, subduction, what is expected in the deep parts of subduction zones. Okay. So these extensional basins, just uh, once more, the Alboran Sea, the Ligero Provencal Basin here, the Tyrrhenian Sea, the Aegean Sea, and there would be also the Pannonian Basin, but I will not be talking about the Pannonian Basin today. Back arc ext extension started, or rather accelerated, some 35 million years ago. Okay, so there is a big change in the Mediterranean area some 30, 35 million years ago. Let's have a look to a section. Sorry, I, I go too fast. Okay, let's have a look to a north-south section from Africa to the Balkans here. So you see this section at lithospheric scale. This is Africa. This is the Moesian platform here in the Balkans. You see the Aegean Sea here, underlain by a rather thin crust, 23, 25 kilometers only, still thinner in the Cretan Sea here. This is Crete. This is Santorini, the active volcano. And this is the uh, subduction zone here. Okay, And this is the trace of the North Anatolian Fold. And you see the age of the high pressure metamorphism that is uh, decreasing from the north to the south here. Okay. And the, the age of a younger episode of high temperature metamorphism that is also younger in the south than in the north. So everything in that area is migrating. The thrust in the Elenites, laterally, and also the high pressure metamorphism. The volcanic arc is migrating, as you will see, through time. And this I'll be talking later on. Let's have a look, for instance, on, on this section. Here you have the age 
in million years. And here the, you have the latitude. So here, here in the north and here in the south. That's the present day's thrust front. Okay. And this black thing that will turn to red here is volcanism and plutonism, magmatism in general. And you see that from 80 million years all the way to 35 million years, the magmatism stayed at the same place, okay, in the northern part of the section. Okay. And afterward, after 35 MA, the magmatism moved rather quickly to its present position, okay, southward. Okay. Thrust fronts has, have migrated to the high pressure metamorphism has migrated as well. Okay. So 35 MA is a big change here where the, the volcanic arc, the magmatic arc, has suddenly started to migrate toward the south to reach its present position where you can see it now with the Santorini volcano, for instance. Okay. So this state is very important. So we have here the compression between the relative motion of Africa with respect to Eurasia, and you see that we are in a compressional, uh, in a con convergent uh, geodynamic context, convergence between Africa and Eurasia here. Still, after 35 MA, we had the opening of these basins okay, in this convergent domain. So within the convergent geodynamic context, extensional basins have opened after 35 MA. So which forces control this evolution and which dynamic relation between convergence, subduction, and extension? But let's have a look to the active Mediterranean tectonics. Uh, seismicity first, you see this is a, from a, a paper that uh, Claudio was a leading author of. You see that seismicity is all over the place, of course, along the main subduction zones here. And of course, in the eastern part of the domain, it's very act active here. Okay? Not very deep, usually. Then we have the focal mechanism of earthquakes that tells you which type of fault is active during an earthquake, these are reverse faults in red, normal faults, and thrice slip faults here. And you see that you have all types of faults in that area. Of course, thrice slip faults, are earthquakes are concentrated along this main fault, the North Anatolian fault here. And uh, uh, reverse type faults are concentrated along the uh, main subduction zone, which is the Hellenic subduction zone here. And you see that in many mountain belts, like the Apennines, uh, what you have is mostly extension, okay? And, and all, all, the, uh, all the earthquakes that are very famous uh, in, in that area, uh, most of them are extensional earthquakes. So the Alpenines, it is a mountain belt, but it is collapsing now, okay? It's under extension, okay? In that area, you have a mixture of compression, uh, extension, and strike slip faults here. And you see that the Alps are not very active anymore, okay? And if I go back to this area, region here with compression in the south, thrice slip in the back, and extension here. Okay, lots of extensional earthquakes here. And indeed, normal faults, extensional faults, are very frequent in the Mediterranean domain. Okay? And this normal fault in Crete here, the Lasteros normal fault here, is uh, quite spectacular, but you, you can see many of them all around, all, all around the Mediterranean, including the Apennines, where they are very active, okay? GPS velocity field here, well, you see the uh, uh, v slow motion of uh, Africa with respect to Eurasia, and you see the very fast motion of Anatolia with respect to Eurasia, okay? Along this big fault here, here the North Anatolian fault. Okay, uh, Carlo mentioned the uh, future Istanbul earthquake, uh, and uh, of course it is along this big fault, okay, the Marmara Sea earthquake. Okay, you see a little deformation here in, in, in within uh, what we may think is, is Eurasia here, the relative motion between the Apennines and, and the stable Eurasia. If you have, if you look at the same sort of velocity field, but with uh, Africa fixed here, uh, you see better the convergence between. Africa and Eurasia, because there are more GPS stations in Eurasia uh, than in Africa here. And, and still, you see that it doesn't change very much the picture around here. Why? Because this motion is much, much faster than the convergence between Africa and Eurasia. Okay. So whatever the, refer the reference frame, you, you always see this rotation of Anatolia and the acceleration of the motion from here all the way to here. 
Okay. So what's very important is that in the Mediterranean we have something which is very characteristic. We have internal displacement which are faster than the motion of the two main plates at the boundary of the system. Okay. So what's the engine? Okay. Uh, just a brief look to uh, active and recent volcanoes, of course, and they are, uh, you, you know all of them. Okay, and um, the most famous one, one of the most famous one is, is Santorini here, where, where you, you, you see the caldera here. Okay, and, you, and active centers north of the, cal the main caldera, especially here in the Colombo area. Okay. A few images just to uh, give you the, uh, uh, the, uh, and the idea of visiting this place if you have not done it yet. Okay. So Santorini is a nice place for volcanology, for swimming, for anything you like. Okay. There is not only volcanology, you said. Food, yes. Food in Greece is fantastic. Geothermal resources, that's a very, a very important indicator of uh, uh, geodynamics as well. You see here on this uh, map here of uh, geothermal resources in Europe, that the southern part of Europe, and especially this area here, and this area, are very hot in general. Okay? Uh, and the most active developing area, one of the most actively developing geothermal uh, energy in, 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 in the world is uh, Western Turkey nowadays. Okay? So these, these are some of the uh, um, recent geothermal plants in Western Turkey here. Okay. And what's very important is that here you, you have uh, hot water, hot springs. Okay. And the hottest water that are shown in with this brown color here. Okay. And you see that most of the hot springs, the, the hottest one, they are in the, in the western part of Turkey. Okay. Where you have almost no active volcano. Okay. Most of the recent active volcanoes, they are in the eastern part of Turkey. And the recent, uh, you, say, you see here, Pleistocene quaternary volcanic rocks here in white. And in gray here you have uh, Miocene volcanic rocks. So it's an area where you have mostly a Miocene magmatism. Okay. There is one recent volcano, which is the Kula volcano that's around here, but only one. Okay. Mo most of the recent volcanoes, they are in, in the east here. So we have active hot spring, and the hottest one, in an area where we don't have active volcanism. Okay. And this is, it's not magmatism itself that controls the position of these geothermal thermal fields, it's tectonics and geodynamics. It's because the mantle is very close to the surface, and because it's very hot in that area, that we have these geothermal fields there. Okay. So it's a very important indicator. And you see here on the, on the map of western part, the western part of Turkey, this is the Menderes Massif. The main faults here, the main grabbins, the Gediz graben here, or the Buyuk Menderes uh, graben here, or the Simav graben here, you see that the thermal uh, plants or uh, hot springs, the main ones, are all associated with the faults here. Okay, and here as well. So some pictures of these faults, you have... Um, uh, an active normal fault in the Buyuk Menderes Graben here. This is a steep fault, normal fault. This is a rather steep fault also, the Simav Graben in the north here. Uh, two normal faults here and, and here, and on either side of the Gediz Graben here, which is with very active geothermal uh, uh, energy recovery. And here, uh, this is a normal fault. Okay? Normal fault in that area is just like this a very shallow dipping normal fault that has accommodated a lot of extension. Okay. So you may think that usually normal faults are steep, uh, but many normal faults are shallow dipping. Okay. They are called detachments here. And this is one of the most spectacular, spectacular ones in the, in the uh, Mediterranean area. And this is another view of it. You have the metamorphic basement here, myopleicine sediments, and just in between there is this shallow dipping fault. And when you walk, Around here, you walk on the fault plain. Okay. And these are these faults, the steep faults and the shallow dipping fault, that conduct the uh, cold water from the surface down to 
the middle crust and also the reverse motion of the hot water from the depth of the system all the way to the surface. Okay, and, and the, the um, uh, hot springs are, occur here. Okay. And this abnormal geothermal gradient that we have here is a result of subduction dynamics, slab retreat and slab tear. Um, let's focus on the Aegean region now. Uh, seismicity, and, and you see here with the seismicity that you have compressional seismicity in that area, extensional, that's the blue ones in that area, and strike slip along the North Anatolian Fault here. You see a concentration of extensional features here, faults here, uh, earthquakes here, which is the current rift. Okay. So uh, compressional features, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Ridge, the Calabria Wedge here, that signed the uh, present day subduction. Very thick features like uh, here the Mediterranean Ridge, where sediments have accumulated since the Miocene uh, above the subducting Afri African oceanic lithosphere here. Um, let's have a new look to the GPS velocity field. You see the motion of Anatolia here. And you see that the vectors, they are longer here than here. Okay, that signs that, of course, is due to the extension you have here in Western Turkey and, and the current rift. And if we have a look to the same data set here, not with fixed Eurasia, but fixed Anatolia here. Okay, so refer the reference point is here in Anatolia. There is no motion anymore in Anatolia because Anatolia is, moves rigidly. You see that Eurasia is moving fast toward the right, and you see that the southern part of the Aegean is moving rather fast toward the south. So, of course, between this and this, we have extension here. Extension here and extension here. Okay. Extension in the current rift here, and extension in the western part of Turkey with the grabbins I have just shown you around here. Uh, with lots of, magma, of, of uh, earthquakes, rather big extensional earthquakes. And the velocity of extension is 1.5 centimeters per year across the, the single current rift, which is a very fast continental extension. They're three times faster as the Baikal Rift or three times faster as the East Af as the, uh, African Rift. Okay. And the western part of Turkey is also more distributed, the extension is more distributed, but the total extension is around two centimeters per year. Okay. So in this, sorry, this should be uh, above, but an extensional component here, and this extensional component is not recent. It started some 30, 35 million years ago. And this whole domain here has been extending since 35 MA in a distributed fashion here. <coughs> Uh, we'll come back to this later on. Okay, so extension in, those, in, this, in this domain here. So which are the forces that drive the deformation of Anatolia and the, Aege and the Aegean region? Is it the collision between Arabia and Eurasia, a sort of extrusion mechanism here? Or is it the retreat of the subduction zone here, uh, slab retreat here, uh, maybe a combination of the two, uh, as we'll see afterwards and which is the cause of the localization of deformation some 50, 5 million years ago with the creation of uh, this big fault here, the North Anatolian Fault. Uh, let's focus a little bit on the current rift. Uh, let's go back to this north-south lithospheric section of the Aegean here, okay? And, and so this is here. So let's have a look to the evolution of that area here from the late Eocene, early Oligocene. So you see the situation. We have uh, uh, subduction of the uh, oceanic lithosphere here, uh, starting here. Uh, very active here with the collision of uh, Apulia here in the formation of mountain belts. Here are the Elenides, and here, of course, the end of the Pyrenees, but part of the Alps here, and here the future Betic Cordilleras. Okay. Uh, this is a, a hinge, hinge period here where we move from compression in the Bacarc regions to extension, okay? And this is 23 million years ago in the Aquitanian here. You, see, you start to open this basin here. You start extension here, okay? And progressively, you see that slabs are retreating here. And progressively, you open these basins, large oceanic basin here, 
and you see that we are now in the, in the late Miocene. Early Mycenaean, of course, it's in this configuration that you, you will have the desiccation of the Mediterranean and the, you will have a conference on, on this episode, which is a major uh, thing here uh, with the deposition of salt and gypsum all around and the Mediterranean and in, in the deep basins here. And after that, in the Pliocene, you have the opening of the southern part of the, of the Tyrrhenian Sea here, and this is the, the present stage. Okay, so just to give you a, a more dynamic view, can move faster, and you see that the slabs here, the subduction zones, are retreating. Here it's retreating southward, here eastward, and here westward. Okay. Okay, and this is the displacement of, of the, the trenches here from 30 million years to the present, or here from 30 million years to the present. Okay. Um, the displacement since uh, 70 million years. This is the displacement of, of Africa with respect to Eurasia here. And you see that the displacement here is this long here in 70 million years. And this is only in 30 million years. Okay. So you see that this part of Italy here has moved with respect to, respect to uh, France, for instance, uh, about the same distance or a longer distance than Africa during, in, in 30 million years, and Africa has moved uh, in 70 million years with respect to the same point. Okay? So even on the long term, the displacement of uh, internal domains in the Mediterranean are much faster than the displacement at the boundary between Africa and Eurasia. Okay. Let's make a thin thesis of, of uh, the geodynamics of this area. You see, this is Africa here, and this is the, uh, the Balkans here. This is the evolution of the same section I showed you, okay? And you see the progressive closure of this oceanic domain here. You see the subduction of this block here, which is Apulia, the formation of a mountain belt, and then extension, okay? So you see here the subduction of this block here. We make a mountain belt, and then from 35 MA it is extended. So we first make the subduction the, by subduction of the continental domain. We make the mountain belt, and then the slab retreats, and the whole domain is extended. Okay? And during this episode, we have the formation and exhumation of this blue material here, which is the uh, blue schist and eclogites. We have, don't have time to show you. And this is the, uh, the evolution here, Africa, uh, Eurasia, and you see the formation of the mountain belt here, and, and then the slab starts to retreat, and you have the spreading of the mountain belt in the present day situation. Okay? This is another view, a numerical <coughs> simulation uh, by some colleagues here in Rennes and Paris, and, and you see exactly the same thing, but numerically simulated here, with the subduction of the African lithosphere here. Again, uh, sorry. Okay. And you see that materials is subducted. If you look at the, uh, the blue material, subducted and then exhumed. Subducted and then exhumed for the green material. Okay. So you same same story. Uh, one drawn by a field geologist and another one uh, produced by a, a, a numerical simulation here. Okay. Another one which is not in the same area but it's very similar to show you the exhumation of metamorphic rocks. You see them here getting down here and at some stage the subduction regime changes because you'll have slab detachment here and the material is coming back to the surface. Okay. And that's why you observe the eclogites and blue schist in the Mediterranean domain. Okay, so to, uh, to finish up, uh, you see here the, uh, the same reconstructions here. From these reconstructions, you can calculate, you can measure the convergence here, which is about 800 kilometers okay, between Africa and Eurasia. The slab retreat, since... Uh, 65 million years is about 700 kilometers. Since 30 million years, it's about 500 kilometers. Okay, but if we start with 65 MA, the total length of lithosphere that went down into the mantle is the sum, the, you have to add convergence here, plus slab retreat. 
Okay? And this makes 800 plus 700, which, which gives uh, 1,500 kilometers. Okay? With, of course, an error bar, which is rather large, but it gives you a first order figure, 1,500 kilometers. And completely independently, you can compare this with the length of the slab you see in tomographic uh, models, okay? which is also approximately 1,500 kilometers. Okay. So you see that from the, uh, ge the geology, okay, this is purely the work of a geologist, and this is purely the work of a geophysicist, you come, with, you come up with approximately the same figure. Okay. Uh, and, and so it's very likely that the complex evolution of the eastern Mediterranean area has been dr dr driven through time by only one subduction, which is the subduction that we see today in the dipping here, hanging in, in the mantle. Okay. And then this slab is more complex. Uh, it's been uh, t t torn in several, uh, several piece, pieces here. And I just would like to finish up with this. The shape of the slabs below the Mediterranean, you see that its, it's shapes, uh, shape is quite complex. Because of 35 million years of slab retreat, it's been, uh, it has been, it's been deformed, it's been uh, detached, it's been torn, and in some areas like below Turkey, you have no slab left here, okay? And you see its complex shape. And this, uh, this of course, has com consequences on the deformation at the top uh, in the crust, okay? And uh, I think I have to stop here. But Claudio will show you more about the effect of uh, what is going on below the Mediterranean uh, and its consequences on, on what is you can, we can see at the surface. Thank you.